hello guys welcome back my name is precious and this is my youtube channel if you are a returning subscriber welcome back and thank you for coming back and if you are new to this channel welcome welcome back i hope you stay i hope you subscribe i hope you press that notification bell and you never leave us okay thank you thank you for coming back so today i don't have a lot to say i just thought that i should share my experience and like um the challenges that i faced as a new esl teacher like teaching in person and teaching in south korea because coming before coming here i only taught online and for a short period of time for a few months maybe i think was it four four to five months i taught online before coming here i never taught like someone who has zero knowledge of the language someone who wouldn't understand when you say stand up and they don't know what that is someone who wouldn't understand um sit down what sit down is so it was quite a journey an interesting one i think like looking back now that we are in november looking back in january when i got here the first day i went into my class um like it was it was a mess but i i covered it well because yeah um when i got my student it was towards the end of the semester so already i can say most of them they knew what they were doing so i didn't have to do a lot of work i was happy about that so now after two weeks um the new semester started and i got new students i got like phonics students phonics means these people you have to teach them how to pronounce like how to make sounds like a you have to tell them that this alphabet is a but then it makes the sound ah ah, ah. like you have to teach them like from scratch they are so small like those babies i don't know how old they were like maybe i can say five but they just looked so small and they were so quiet like that's <laughs> That's one class that used to humble me because, you know, I walk in class like energetic. Hello, everyone. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, those kids and she, maybe they just didn't know what hello meant because they only warmed up to me, I think, after a week. Now, when I walk to class, I'm like, hello, teacher. And then now it's fun when you teach them alphabets, they respond. Now, when you say, um, B banana now they respond when you tell them stand up sit down and everything they respond but at first they didn't so i had to use like a lot 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 of tpr a lot of tpr tpr is total physical response so when i say a i have to tell them now i write it on the board this is a how do we say it ah 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 this is b what sound does it make b b b so like it was <laughs> it was so interesting guys but then at the same time it used to stress me out because i'm like what if these kids like never understand but one thing about kids they learn fast like kids learn fast like if you teach them like repetition you teach them the same thing every day by the end of like a week already they know what to do they know the class rules they know how to call like you when they need help even if they wouldn't say it like in full sentences they'll just raise their hand teacher teacher then okay i get it you need my help you go to them you help them because with phonics classes there's no conversation <laughs> there's no conversation like the only thing you do you say it's right finish yes okay next page that's all you'll be saying and writing on the board and having them to say things for the first few weeks that's what you'll be doing until now they learn like a bit of vocabulary now they'll be asking you questions teacher what's your name like those kind of things Bob Papa will be asking you teacher um your hair 
like they wouldn't know what to say about my hair but then they will see that my hair is different they'll be like teacher your hair then i'm like what about my hair then someone will be trying to braid their hair they're like mm -hmm, nice teacher nice teacher then i used to go to work like uh, i don't know what you guys call it i call it a donut with a donut so they wouldn't understand that like why do you have your hair up like that is it not heavy and like stuff like that okay so now moving to the older classes so with the older classes they knew or they know a bit of english right so but the problem is the accent because now there is the accent that we teach uh, we teach them like the english accent and now they have their own korean accent <laughs> i just didn't understand that like uh, the struggle between f and b because with them they don't have is it f i think it's f they don't have f so someone will be saying like coffee they'll be like copy teacher i drank copy then i'm like how did you drink copy copy like it's a paper they're like no teacher copy i went to a cafe like a cafe i'm like okay what's that like i was just so confused most of the time and when they are done writing like you'll just hear a lot of people saying teacher penis 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 i'm like guys what <laughs> What are you saying? What are you saying? What is Pinish? Then um, this other student came to the board and wrote it down and they wrote like Finnish. So that means they are done writing. So you can come and check what um, they wrote or something. So they used to do it a lot because now imagine a group of like five or seven students at the same time. Teacher Pinish, Pinish, Pinish. I'm like, what? You? <laughs> what is finished but then now i got to teach them that no you don't just say finish you say teacher i am finished so i had to emphasize the f whenever i speak to them i would emphasize the f like it's finished it is coffee it is a cafe it's a fish not a peach like yeah make them repeat that over and over again so that that was like my my most <laughs> hectic moment like guys you know i never thought that english is is this hard until i came here because i see these kids sometimes they struggle and they struggle with the things that me as a native speaker i'm just like come on you should know how you like that's easy like that's another thing that i I struggled with because I think I expected them to to just know like to just understand that we say it like that I want to go to the bathroom teacher may I go to the bathroom don't just say teacher bathroom I'm like why can't you just make a full sentence but I had to understand that they learn the language in bits and pieces because the language is hard for us like native speakers we think it's easy but then for them it's not especially if you are not getting exposed to the language every day you only speak it when you are at the academy when you get home the tv shows that you watch they are in korean everything you read on the street is in korean the music you listen to is in korean at school like your formal school you are being taught in in korean like yeah it becomes like a bit hard for them to grasp it and when uh, the other way they pronounce things is um they, they add like e sound at the end of um sentences not sentences words so in maybe if i want to say um cake they won't just say cake they'll be like teacher cakey <laughs> i used to lose my mind I'm like why are you saying cakey it's just cake just say cake and end it there but i like, teach her cakey and um which other word um yeah man they add like e if a word has like 
it's a long vowel sound at the end of it it has an e so they will say the e as it is so if maybe you say um, which word okay cake cakey and maybe because okay so because it, yeah mm, they won't just say because someone because the teacher i went to school and yeah guys i was like what was i doing what did i get myself into but then now with time if you keep teaching them the same thing if you keep telling them that hey you don't say cakey it's just cake you don't say um um schooly you school straight school school just say school and yeah some get better some i feel like they just don't care so another challenge that i had was with um students who like just don't show interest these are middle school students they are <sighs> every esl teacher in korea i don't know about other countries will tell you about middle school students Bruh, those kids i don't know if they are forced to attend english academies or what or maybe they want us to beg them or whatever i really don't know what their thing is because this person will come to class when he or she gets to class the first thing they do is to sleep like immediately when they get to class they put their backpacks and then they lie on the table they sleep and you're like right so you left your house to come here and sleep like what is that about and they wouldn't talk to you you'll get to class try to greet them okay now i'm used to the elementary students those ones are so vibey when you get to class hello 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 hi guys how was your day they are already telling you teacher at school my friend did this I ate this and that for lunch already, teacher. I like your hair, teacher. Today I have new shoes. I have a new jacket. Today is vibe. You know, yes, like elementary students, they are vibe like that. Once they are like they get comfortable with you, once like you guys have a relationship, they just love you like that. Ah, uh, uh, middle school, they will humble you this with your energy. You like you drop from hundred to zero in a minute. You walk in class, you're all vibey, you're all happy, like you are ready. Hmm. Those students will just be sitting like this. Guys, how was your day? What page are we in? Do you understand? Just like this. Someone wouldn't even open their books. So if they open their books, someone will just open their books and and look at you and not say anything. <laughs> You're like, oh my guy, or oh, no girl. Like, why are you even here? But with time, I got to understand that, like, some students, they are forced to attend this english academies they really don't like the language or maybe it's just so hard for them or they feel like it's a lot of weight for them because imagine now you go to school in the morning around eight you finish school around two from two you are moving from one academy to the next you are going to Maths Academy, Science Academy, Korean Literature Academy. Then last you have to go to English Academy at 8. You have to finish at 9. Let's say maybe you go from 8 to 9. You must be tired. So I, I really do understand where they are coming from. But some of them, I just feel like they are really full of it. Because they are students who attend all these academies but they would still interact with you in class i don't expect them to have the same energy with the younger ones but then at least show interest show that you want to learn because how are you going to learn how are you going to learn to speak the language if you're not even trying not even a hello because you get to class and say hello and they just keep quiet maybe one boy or one girl will be the one like hello teacher and that's it open your books start writing 
someone wouldn't even raise your hand their hand to say teacher i don't understand please explain again they'll just be quiet like no, oh i have this boy <laughs> i have this boy so that guy name he comes to class when he gets to class he opens his book i'll explain like the activity the pages that they'll be doing on that day and everything i'll ask guys do you understand and they'll be like yes we understand they start doing their job those who need clarity they'll raise their hands i'll go to them explain or explain to the whole group if i feel like most of them like they have the same problem so i'll just explain to the whole group that boy you'll never know if he understand or doesn't like he never he doesn't write his book i'm telling you if we take his workbook it's empty from day one that boy never wrote anything i complained about him and nothing was done about it so i'm just like one thing about hagwans again so most of the time you'll complain about students as long as they are not bothering the korean teacher chances are nothing is going to be done about the student so i've been complaining about the student that like he's not doing anything in class so what must i do and they just say oh we'll talk to him and nothing changed so these days i'm just like oh my brother i get it saying when i it's up to you but and you're not even feeling sorry for them because they are spending so much i get it saying and there's guy number two guy number two comes to class late guy number two comes to class most of the time 80 percent of the time he comes to class without his book so now i'm halfway with the class right i'm teaching maybe 30 minutes in he comes in he doesn't have a book he was just going to sit down. He wouldn't even say, teacher, I'm sorry, I forgot my book so that I can go make a copy for him. He'll just come to class and sit down. I'm like, so now I must sense, Corwena, you don't have a book. How are we going to solve this? How are we going to work together? Like back then, I used to like maybe ask him, you don't have your book? And then he'll just be like, he won't even say a word. He'll just like nod with his head. Then I'll ask like maybe make a copy for him. But then now I saw that now it's so time consuming because now when I'm out busy making copies, like the other students who came on time, who came prepared, now they have to wait for this guy who always comes late, who always never shows interest in class. And now we have to wait for him. So these days I'm just like, if he doesn't have a book, I just send him to our assistants the ladies who make copies for us i'm like just go to them and tell them to make a copy for you sometimes he just sits and he wouldn't do anything i also just continue teaching i'm like you don't talk to me i won't talk to you i'm not here to beg you i'm here to do my job and i'm here to work with students who are willing to learn when if you don't want to learn if you're just here for the register i don't care whether you learn or you don't learn i still get my salary in full and the directors and everyone they know about you and they're not doing anything about it so i really i really don't care anymore so yeah guys those are just <laughs> the challenges that i faced with um being a first time esl teacher at a hug one so yeah it was quite an interesting journey but then i'm just proud of how far i've come because now i don't even really have to prepare that much when i go to class i can just walk in you can give me like any topic you can give me any worksheet and i'll just wing it i'll just like get on and teach with it so yeah that's it guys <laughs> let me know what you think let me know what i can what i should uh, make a video about next time because i feel like i haven't been doing many sit downs anymore because sometimes i feel like there's really nothing to talk about i don't know what to talk about so if you have some topics that you would want me to touch on and stuff just let me know 
and just guys i enjoy reading your comments and engaging with you just let me know what you think is it something that you are willing to do like teaching yes in a foreign country or you're just like no no after listening to you i'm not willing to do that like i just want to know what you guys think okay thank you i'm so hungry thank you for watching don't forget to like share subscribe comment um whatever do the likes guys so to do's